Hello and welcome back to Have You Say One on One Shadow Boxing. We're here at WA Studios with Bill Mickenberg. And uh, Bill, we just discussed a few of the problems of our world. And one of the problems may be the governments <laughs> and some of the government's action. And it's not the Australian government we're talking about only, it's the US and all the other sure. governments, almost, almost them similar. Yeah. And, uh, but when the government and the elected politicians lying to us, yeah. probably that's the first moral issue. Mm. However, I know everyone, even Tony Abbott says, that was an election promise, it's not yeah. a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're standing up for something and you say something and you want to gain the, the trust of the people sure. and the money from them to put into your pockets, you couldn't say I don't lie, I just an election promise which I couldn't keep because yeah, yeah, it's absurd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, look, I'm with you. I mean, you know, and, and we could have plenty of examples of this, okay, obviously. Well, so. wow, we could look at uh, Tony Abbott's promise on uh, this issue of freedom, Section 18C of the uh, Racial Discrimination Act. He said we'd look into it, hopefully modify or change it radically because it's such a bad. Uh, section of law, but now that he's and in we power, know even people punished by because of the section well, of the law well, in Australia right. and, and even journalists. Yeah, I mean, it's not my favorite. Well, <laughs> this guy who been punished, but uh, the, the right thing is freedom well, of speech right. is needed. Absolutely, it doesn't matter if yeah. it's used by me yeah. or you or anyone else. Yeah, well, that's so right. why do you think? The liberals piss their pants. Well, well, look, at the end of the day, they like to play politics. They want to keep everybody happy. I mean, we know why labor would especially but be keen. But if you've got a moral campus, you're not well, losing I, that because you want to keep everyone I know. happy, I know. do you? I know. Because that's sort of nonsensical. Sure. Well, look, in, in Western Sydney, you got, what, a, a good 20-odd seats that are, you know, uh, uh, Islamic strongholds, so their labor is very keen to hold on to their vote. Now, that shouldn't be as much of an excuse for the libs, uh, but the truth is you're going to offend somebody no matter what you say. If I came here and said the Geelong Cats are the best footy team, I'll probably get offended, uh, people <laughs> getting offended in Perth. Come on. That's, but this law says just that. If you have a reasonable chance of offending somebody in insulting, humiliating. Come on, every time you open your mouth, you're probably going to humiliate or offend somebody. That's called living in a democracy. It's called being a man. You know, now we, got, we can't even do it on the sporting field, right? You're accused of no, being a racist if you boo do, on the sporting field. Yeah, I couldn't even talk back to the empire. <laughs> what? You know, what? because you're just too aggressive. You're what? bullying what? someone. <laughs> it's not bullying. Come on, man. But, you know, political correctness. How far we went with political correctness just in Australia? Yeah. Go back to the 70s, yep. when we used to have a sort of pioneering party, yep. which is the oldest sure. party in Australia, yep. still on, on sort of in, in the arena, is Labour. Yep. And we lost Labour. Labour lost us. Labour yep. lost everyone. Not me yep. necessarily, but you know, they're strongholds. They're not really yep. Labour yep. anymore. Well, they're not. So what's happened? So what's, who, who creeped into labor? Who well, used it as a springboard? Well, mind you, I, I just recently, and this is all fits in nicely here in Perth, you had uh, Kim Beasley Sr., right? There's a whole family, yes. Well, it's a tradition, family. Yes. But he, in 1970, at your state labor conference here in Perth, he actually said something very profound. He said, when I was growing up, the Labor Party was, you know, I had the cream of the working crop. And now it's got working the dregs, class. the working class. The cup of the working That's class, That's right, yes. but now it's got the dregs of the middle class, he said. And he said, you're turning this into a spiritual spittoon with all your, you know, stupid politically correct ideas. Uh, he was right. That was 1970. He was complaining about the Labour Party and the direction it was taking. So just one question on, on, on these two big parties. Yeah. So what made them mm. in Parliament to go that way? You think because that's one of the reasons can be, I'm just asking you because I don't know and it's all, you yeah. know, confused in my head. Because they never worked in real life, they being <laughs> young, you know, graduates from university yeah, and yeah. they just said, we want to be career politicians. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think that's a good part of it. As you say, they're not in the real world. So we got the same thing in America right now. You got people hounding about uh, Trump, uh, uh, Ben Carson. Uh, neither of them career politicians. I say that's probably the best thing you can give America, as somebody who hasn't been a lousy career politician, you know? So, 
career politicians, what can we do? So the, what can we do? I'm yeah. talking about the Australian yeah, public. Yeah. Sure. What the public can do, because we got the elections in every four years, we not have democracy in yeah. between, yeah. Uh, and we're still pretending we are living in a democratic country. Yeah. Yeah. What can we do to change that, or which direction we can have to yeah. change? Yeah. Oh, it's tough. You say you are pessimist well, today, in the but, short term. but in the long yeah, term. Yeah. So, but for the long term, we need some sort of sure. vision. Yeah. What's the vision? Well, again, I'm not picking on this one issue, but just yesterday we had uh, Corey Bernardi uh, debating a fellow Australian senator, Penny Wong, again, on this issue of homosexual marriage. We've had 16 bills in 10 years. Everyone's been defeated so far. But if this is the stuff of national debate, again, a teeny minority group pushing an agenda item that's got the whole world transfixed, well, you're not going to win anything in that mindset. So Corey's a good man, but he's in the coalition. And what happens if the coalition goes down this path? Is he going to toe the line? Does he go independent? Do we look at smaller independent parties to have salvation? I don't know. It's the Greens and the Labour saying, oh, we have to follow the world yeah. because the United States has decided to equal, equal marriage, yeah. marriage equality. That's a lie. Well, United sure. States and the uh, people who yeah. are running Oh, the five country, judges. Five judges they decided. They never decided. So they, 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 they politicians yeah. never get around to vote yes. Sure. And then judges made decisions for the people to follow yeah. when they should administrate the law, yeah. not making the law yeah. above the people. That's they right. not have the right. If you're looking at the, I mean, you don't need to be a genius to tell. In the Constitution of the United States, yeah. in no way any judge can make any law. Yeah. And now we got equal marriage, both by the judges, yeah. onto the top of the American people. Yeah. And last week, the American president in Africa, standing yeah. Yeah. up yeah. and yeah. asking in his sort of home yeah, yeah, country, yeah. telling yeah. the president of that country, That's right. uh, you should respect yeah, homosexuality yeah, yeah. and you have to have equal marriages. And they said, this is not a concern in here. Yeah, of, Get course, home, of, course it isn't. of course it isn't. And your country, he didn't say that, your country and your politicians not even voted for yes yeah, for yeah. that, and you got it. So we're not that paradox. we rather say yeah. no until yeah. we think it's right. Yeah. Well, as I say, I don't have a lot of hope immediately for the West. But as you say, Kenya, these guys told Obama to get lost. They said, you know, they stood up to him. They're not, you know, nobody's standing up to him in America, but in Kenya, they told them to get lost. So that's where my hope lies. Maybe it'll come out of Asia, Africa, Latin America, who knows? But it's not going to come from the West in the near future. And in, back to Ger not Germany, but to uh, Austria, yep. in the Vienna Parliament, mm. they say no for equal yep. marriage equality. Yeah. Despite of the fact they got Sharia law, yeah. well, well, sure. <laughs> when they punished the yeah, German, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, an Austrian lady, yeah. because she just told the truth yeah. and say to oh, the right. uh, people, okay, Mohammed yeah. married his wife in year sure. three, yeah. and then consumed the marriage in that's right. Year eight, oh, well, eight married and uh, what uh, eleven consummated, something like that. Yeah, I, I think, so. but you know, not, anyway, not very so good. <laughs> not very good, but but <laughs> that because she quoted the historical facts, yeah. she been punished by. Oh, oh sure, the Austrian court oh, absolutely using Sharia yeah, law. Yeah. How well, good is that? Well, again, it's the people versus the rulers. Uh, you say Austria. Look at France. Last year, they had a big march all over the capitals. Uh, France, 1.4 million in the streets of Paris marching for traditional marriage. And the big plug was children have a right to a mother and a father. Now, come on, France, secular, left-wing country like all of Europe, 1.4 million ordinary French people marching through the streets of Paris saying, hey, children have this right. So that gives me hope. I mean, as bad as Europe is, there's, there's a lot, the ordinary people, they're not happy. It's these sleazeballs running the show that you know we have to deal with. But I think most Australian uh, people, most American people, most European, deep down, they're, they're, they've had a gut full of all this. How strong is uh, the family in yeah. the family movement in Australia? Oh, well, it's, I mean, there's certainly family groups, family organizations. I mean, as I keep telling people, uh, 
the other side, whether it's you know the, the movement to redefine marriage, what have you, the, the, they're always a very, very small handful, actually. They're just very vocal, very active. Organized. Uh, organized. Uh, know the strategy how to Well, yeah, they know how to milk the, the system. They know how to get the media. Media, absolutely. They got the handbook at home. Well, well sure. Step well, one, two, well, well, three. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So we got the numbers. It's just, well, look, most families are busy being families. Come on, they're looking after their kids. They don't have time to go on marches. They don't have time to lobby politicians. So we do need to get some more people a bit more active, a bit more vocal. Uh, I was told here in Australia in the, in the, what, 50s, you had something like 7,000 members of the Communist Party out of a, what, population of five, six million. And they had a huge impact for their... Um, 7,000 members, but I often, as a counterpoint, go, let's look at William Wilberforce, the slave trade. He never had more than 20 or 30 active members fighting in parliament for their uh, cause, and in the end, they prevailed. So it's always a small group, a remnant, if you will. It's never going to be the masses. They're too busy or they're asleep, but if you get a handful of committed people who are concerned about good values, what's important, well, sometimes we can turn it around. Don't you think, Bill, just to finishing off, in a country, when you are a member or a citizen of that country, you should be that proud to, to really give and, you know, some value for your values yeah. and yeah. try to live the life sure. on following the values. Yeah. And, but that's what is not... Not here, so it's not, it's yep. not, I'm not complaining about numbers, yeah, but yeah. when the whole country or people, big numbers, don't recognize what's going around them, yep. that is something which is yeah. wrong. Yeah, well, we got these narcotics, you know, TV, entertainment, mass, uh, you know, we got a, a nation of zombies. We've lost why we sent our sons overseas to spill blood back, you know, 70 years ago. It's, it's, you know, it's a distant memory. We have no idea. Some things are worth fighting for. Some values are worth championing, even if you're on the losing side. Whitaker Chambers, right, when he left communism in America in the 30s, he said, I've left the winning side for the losing side. He became a Christian. He abandoned communism. So he said he was on the losing side. Well, sure, short term. Uh, short term, it looked exactly like that. But I would, well, first of all, what happened? You know. The fall of Berlin Wall. You know, nobody saw that back in the 30s. It looked like this was the wave of the future. It was going to win and forever be there. Well, it's gone in the dustbin of history. So again, we need the long-term perspective. We need people who are committed. We need to remind ourselves of the important values that are worth fighting for. And, well, maybe we can win a few battles on the way. Okay, Bill. Thank you for that nice closing. And next week, same channel, same time. Have your say, one-on-one -on -one shadow boxing.